Hi everybody, I am back with another video and today I am joined with three members of Head Cracker's Mad Mob in order to demonstrate three different ways that you can paint green skin. All of these methods can of course work for any skin tone and you can change the colors depending on your preference of color, saturation, level of contrast, things like that. Um, personally, as you'll see, I have a preference for a much more muted green rather than a very vibrant kind of neon green. But like I said, all these methods can be scaled up or even down depending on your personal preference and the look that you're going for. All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right, our first method is the classic games workshop method in which you apply a base coat. In my case, I am using olive drab, which is just like a deep green camo color. So I'm gonna be applying that in two thinned out layers. And then after I complete this, I am gonna go in with a contrast paint called Orc Flesh. You don't necessarily have to use a contrast paint, just anything that's going to sink into the recessed area. So you could use a wash. Um, you could use some acrylic ink, whatever you've got on hand. I used this contrast paint and I diluted it with contrast medium in about a 50-50 mix and I am applying this all over. All right, once that is dry, I am going to be taking the same color that I used for my base coat and I am going to be reapplying this everywhere except for the recessed area so you want to avoid all of the deepest parts of the mini and you want to focus on the high points while still covering a good amount of surface area All right, so he has a little bit of definition now. If you're painting a whole squad of guys, you can go ahead and stop there, but I'm gonna bring him up a little bit more with one shade lighter, which for me is this green yellow color. I made a glaze of that color, so I added some technical medium to it, so it's a little bit thinner than it would be straight out of the pot. And I am applying this on all of the high parts covering less surface area than I did with the previous layer. I then go on to do this a few more times waiting for each layer to dry and each time I do this I am taking less and less surface area. All right so that is the end of our first method. Here is a look at the finished mini before we move on to the next one. All right, for our second method, we are going to be doing some layering. So I am actually going to start with the same color I used for the first one. And then I am gonna be blending up into the mid-tone, which I believe is called green yellow. And then after that, I am going to be blending up one shade higher to a color called dark yellow. So we're gonna do this gradually. I am base coating in the same exact way I did for the first one. After I finish that and it's all dry, I am adding a mix that is 50% first color and 50% second color and doing a layer that's less surface area with that mix. Then I'm doing the same thing with just color number two and then finally mixing color number two with color number three, doing another layer of that. And then finally, 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 I am gonna be taking color number three and doing a final highlight. So this may seem a little bit extensive at first, but keep in mind that the final layers take a lot less time because obviously they take less surface area with each one. So it really does not take a huge amount of time. Probably don't want to use this method if you're painting a whole squad of guys, but for something like a warband for Underworlds or Warcry or whatever else, this is a really effective method because the blends are super creamy and you don't get that kind of dirty grungy look that you get if you hit it with a wash. Here is a quick look at the finished mini. Our 
final method is a high contrast glazing method in which you start at a darker point than you perhaps normally would. For me, I'm using this olive brown color, which is a super, super deep, deep, dark green, almost brown. And I am base coating it in the same exact way that I did in the prior two steps. After he is nice and base coated, I am jumping way up high to a very light color. I actually had to mix two colors together to get the color that I wanted, which is Scaly Hide and Necrotic Flesh. Both are army painter paints. So I mix those together in a 50-50 mix and I am applying this straight to all of the high points of the mini. All right, so for a while he's gonna look pretty crazy, but bear with me, we're gonna do a whole lot of blending following this step. And to do that, we are making our custom glaze. So we are mixing our base coat color with our highlight color that we used, mixing them really, really well, and then you're adding a medium. I'm using Lamy in medium. I've also done this with water, honestly, and it worked just as well in my opinion um so yeah don't stress if you don't have a mixing medium mix them together you want a really thin glaze for this with barely any pigment and you want to wipe off any excess on a paper towel or something so that you're not flooding your mini all that I'm doing here is bridging the gap between the light color and the dark color using the glaze. The first few layers you do, you're not really going to see much of a difference. It can be a little bit frustrating using this method at first, but I want to say after three or maybe four layers, you can really start to see the gap being filled in and it starts to look pretty cool in my opinion. Um, this definitely takes patience and you have to let areas dry, go to other areas on the mini, do the same thing, and then come back to do that layering without it looking like flooded mess. Um, with this method, I have found if you go from the dark points up to the light points, it helps with a smoother transition and your brush naturally deposits color at the end of your brush stroke. So just keep that in mind when you're blending. After I got it to where I felt like it was blended enough, I, didn't th I then did some stippling of my highlight color on the high points, once again, just to bring those highlights up a little bit. And then if you wish, you could do some more glazing if you found that that wasn't smooth enough. But that is pretty much it for this method. It's definitely a lot darker, but like I said, you can scale it up if you want it to be brighter. I knew that I wanted to paint the rest of the miniature in really bright colors, so that's why I went for a really dark color on his skin tone. And overall, I'm really happy with the way that this guy came out. 